My name is uh, Phil Balkander, and I'm here together with Lars Nitve, chairman of the selection process for Market Art Fair. But obviously, Lars, uh, this isn't your first assignment in uh, the art world. Uh, rather, you are one of the most uh, prominent uh, profiles mm -hmm. in, uh, in art, not only in Scandinavia, but I would also say internationally. But for those listening who maybe not are so familiar with uh, your history or background, could you please uh, give us some uh, bullet points or key, key points? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, given my age, it's a long story, but uh, I'll try to cut it short. Uh, the last 30 plus years, I was director of museums. Of course, I had a history as a curator and an art writer and so forth before. So I, there was a, I've been running a number of museums, including Tate Modern, where I was the first director and I was sort of the, the founding director, but also the Moderna Museet here in Stockholm, which is the National Museum of Modern Art here. Um, the Louisiana Museum in Denmark, which is a museum that's loved by almost everyone who's been there at least. And most recently in Hong Kong, the M Plus Museum, which opens in November uh, this year, 2021. Um, and um, so I've been sort of a curator, but also been running and setting up museums over the years. And uh, now I live in the ski resort of Åre in northern Sweden and uh, do more sort of leisurely things, but also things like this, which I appreciate very much. But I'm assuming that your that your rich history of working both as a curator and as a museum director influences your um, your work here at uh, at Market Art Fair. Yeah, I mean, when you take up a job now after having done these things, I mean, it has to be something really relevant. I, I think that's central. And what Market does is that it creates a platform for Nordic artists or for Nordic art for both the domestic audience and the regional audience, but also for people who come from outside and want to sort of investigate and learn more and understand more about the art scene here. So it's the, the, the basis for it here is really, is really the focus on Nordic art and the art that's made in the sort of five Nordic countries primarily. But as the chairman of this selection process, could you please explain uh, how, how you go about uh, selecting the galleries and the artists? Sure, absolutely. I mean, we have, um, there is a, a call for applications and then there are uh, galleries that apply. And then, of course, the, the committee kicks in. And uh, the application is, is a gallery applies. They, of course, have to state who they are, what their operations have been, how long they've been operating, what they do generally. So, so I mean, you actually check the gallery and it's sort of the provenance of the gallery, so to say. But, but then we also, they also propose a particular program, or something that they want to show, a single, single artist, a small group exhibition, and so forth. And then we really scrutinize this and we look at not only the background of the gallery and its track record, but also very much what they are proposing. And we do really like, because I think that makes a really wonderful art fair if they do monographic presentations, because I think that having a real group of artists or, or works by a single artist is really attractive. Uh, but also if it's a group of artists, uh, we really like it in the committee when you know there's a focus, there's a special theme. It's just not what they have in their storage at the moment, but, but you know there is a clear focus and a thought behind the presentation. Because of course this is a, uh, it, it's a market, so it's actually, um, of course, it is a commercial market. The things are for sale, but it's also an educational uh, process. And people who come here learn about art. They not only buy art, but they actually learn. So I think that that aspect is really, really important. And we want it to be in an intelligent place, simply. So we look at these things and... and uh, uh, of course, the gallery can apply for a small booth or for a really large one. There are like four categories that you can choose, of course, at different cost. And, and uh, the theme they pick or the artist they pick often reflects, of course, uh, the size of the booth also or vice versa. Um, and then we have a discussion. We, the selection committee consists of um, individuals, professionals from the different Nordic countries, 
not all of them, but most of them. And the interesting thing and what's a little bit exceptional, I think, for market is that the selection committee is not made up of, of peers, of gallerists that choose it, each other or dislike each other, but actually of people like me, museum directors or curators, and who have a slightly different perspective than the straight a straightforward commercial one on. And I think that also leads to a situation where you have even higher quality in the selection of, of galleries for market than in many other places. Actually, the common way of doing it is that, that it, you have galleries choosing galleries. And of course, that opens up for, for unpleasant discuss discussions sometimes and exclusions and inclusions, I guess. Yes, I can imagine. Uh, and I'm also curious because I, I, I noticed that you mentioned uh, the concept of uh, themes or uh, thematical uh, uh, perspectives on, um, on the art. Uh, would you say that there are any particular themes in the contemporary art scene that have been emerging in the past few years? In my world, fashion would call it a trend. But mm -hmm. um, uh, what would you say are the main themes in, in contemporary art today? I, I must say, I've always given up on, on trying to, to, to figure out what the themes are. I think once upon a time, when I started in, in art and in art history, I think you could do that. There were clear trends, you know, uh, there was a period of sort of minimalist painting or there was the pop art or there were these different, or maybe you had two uh, currents at the same time, but not much more. Now, with art being a totally global phenomenon and and where there, there's not just like one art center, like Paris or New York, but actually there are so many art centers, including the Scandinavian countries, I think that you have much more diversity than before. Of course, what we've seen in the last, I would say, five years is, for example, more figurative painting again. So, But it doesn't mean that there is no abstract art or no minimalist uh, type sculpture or so. You have, the, the, I think the, the idea of a mainstream has really turned into a delta or an ocean even. So it's hard to, to, uh, to sort of pinpoint this. Often, you know, when there is a turn of a decade or so, you get these questions from, from media. They ask you, so where is art going to go? And the only thing I can say is that the only thing you can be certain of is that you will never know. Whatever you guess, it's not going to go there because art behaves following its own rules. And those rules are beyond our imagination. And that's, that's why art is so great in a way also. But I think that's also why it's difficult to navigate in the world of art if you're new to the scene or new to, new to this world. So what would be your advice to people who are curious about starting to collect art and to buy art but don't really know where to start? I think the, the simple answer I would say is to go to a good art fair, like Market for example, because there you have a number of galleries that have been carefully scrutinized and checked and are sort of approved in a certain way. And of course, what they show is, you know, I think you can trust that. And then the next step is really to trust your own taste, your interest, your passion in a way. So I think if you pair these things, if you start out with, with galleries that you can trust and then you trust your own judgment, that's a good starting point. And then, of course, there's no problem. You can change your mind. You don't have to love the same thing 10 years later. And that can be adjusted, as, you, as we know. That's why we have an art market. Yes, exactly, because art is not only an investment, but it's also something that becomes part of our lives when we Absolutely. have it in, in our homes and so forth. Absolutely. Course. No, I think at, at the core of it is really that, that you, should, you should follow your own passion, things that, that intrigue you. I usually still, you know, art, art that really intrigues me, but I can't really get it. I think that's the best starting point when it's, you have a feeling it tells you something or it does something to you, but you can't figure out what it does or why it does it. That's a really good starting point because that means that you can live with that art for a long time also. Um, and ultimately, I think great art is really art that ex expresses things that can't be expressed in any other way and maybe not with words. And therefore, you know, you can never fully understand an artwork. So I usually give up trying to understand but trust your instincts and your passion. 
But I think it's a critical thing, an important thing that you you start looking at art, uh, of course, in great museums, but also if you want to buy something with galleries that are you can trust. And do you also collect art yourself? Uh, I wouldn't call myself a collector. I definitely have art at home. But in a way, I think it's been helpful for me that I haven't had this urge to own art because it would have been created a conflict of interest often in the museums where I buy art for the museums. So which artwork should I buy for myself and which one for the museum? So luckily enough, I'm not like a passionate collector, but I definitely have, you know, some really good art at home, of course, because I want to live with art. And now when I don't work in a museum, it's uh, even more important. Yes, and also now you have the, uh, the bigger freedom. Exactly. That comes with being, you know, your own individual. Absolutely. Less conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds wise. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lars Nitve, for joining us and thank you for listening. Pleasure. Thank you.